I've been meaning to cover this story, and I think it's important that we do talk about the overall censorship that is happening here in America. And we're seeing it at many levels, be it through social media and in our personal lives. The establishment is doing everything it can to control the narrative. And now more than ever, books like 1984, Fahrenheit 451, or Brave New World are not only relevant, but have a lot of staying power. And unfortunately, I think some sociopaths read all three books, glued them together, and said, hey, this is a good idea. Let's run our government and our institutions like the institutions in these three books. So BSDNC, I mean MSNBC, decided to talk about the relevance of the book 1984 in American politics today. As books are being banned across the nation and people are being censored on social media. Hang on, folks. Brace yourself for this one. Shout out again to Case Study QB. Follow him on all the social media platforms. He's doing some fantastic work. George Orwell's prescient 1984. In 2017, then White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer delivered a five-minute speech to the media declaring that Donald Trump's inauguration was, quote, the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. Here, as you will recall, is a side-by-side look at Trump's inauguration on the left compared to Barack Obama's inauguration in 2009 on the right. Clearly not the case. Orwell wrote, quote, the party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and your ears. It was their final most essential command, end quote. Trump's then advisor, Kellyanne Conway, later went on NBC's Meet the Press to defend Spicer and Trump. She called Spicer's characterization of Trump's inauguration merely, quote, alternative facts. Orwell wrote, quote, and if all others accepted the lie which the party imposed, if all records told the same tale, then the lie passed into history and became truth. Who controls the past, ran the party slogan, controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. <sighs> and yet we have corporate media always controlling the narrative because never once would corporate media use a book that is calling out censorship and establishment control as a way to make all of you afraid of. That's right. Donald Trump. Because this is where this article is going into. This is where this video is going into. The fear of Trump. Trump and anybody else speaking out against a two-party system. You got to be afraid, be afraid and trust corporate media because Trump, if he's in power, he'll ruin it all. And if you support those mean, God awful third parties, well, you're being controlled, too, by Russia or some other foreign power because they want to make you believe that democracy doesn't work. Even though we don't have a democracy, we live in an oligarchy. End quote. In the days that followed Trump's inauguration, George Orwell's magnum opus 1984 became the best selling book of any genre on Amazon. Uh, Amazon, Americans who had read 1984 heard Orwell's alarm bells ringing loudly. 1984 is set in a dystopian near future where a largely forgotten series of world wars and civil conflicts have created three infallible totalitarian states. One of them, Oceania, is ruled by an all-controlling leader named Big Brother, who is underpinned by a devoted following. Big Brother systematically murders anyone who does not fully conform to the party using constant... So like the Democratic establishment when they were going after Bernie Sanders supporters and third-party supporters and progressives and independents. All right, cool. All right, I, I get the idea. I get what you're saying. Surveillance, thought police, and torture. Like today. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure we're on the same boat here, okay? Just, just, just... Just, just why I have an understanding. Okay, cool. Our hero in the book is Winston Smith, a member of the Outer Parli Party in Oceania. Smith works at the so-called Ministry of Truth, rewriting and destroying historical records in order to conform to Big Brother's constantly changing versions of history. With each lie, he is forced to write and rewrite. Smith's hatred for the party and longing for rebellion grows, but he soon learns that in order to survive in this brutal world, quote, you must love Big Brother. It is not enough to obey him. You must love him. The <laughs> so in other words, you got to love Biden. Yes, he just crapped his pants on the, on the national stage. Yes, Joe Biden is constantly slurring and stammering his speech. But guess what? You have to love him because if you don't love him, you're going to get plump. And if you support a third party candidate, you're a, you're a bad man. You're a bad woman if you support a third party independent candidate because that's going to help out Trump. 
And that's going to, you're, 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 you're puppeted by Russia. You're puppeted by those who hate freedom. And corporate media would never lie to us. Ever. Forever, never. They would never get things wrong. They would never throw in their own bias. They wouldn't put up a book like 1984 and project it as a way like, uh-oh, we got to be afraid of the system because they're always going to bring it back to Trump. The ongoing and profound cultural influence of Orwell's magnum opus cannot be understated. 1984 is ubiquitous. It is referenced in movies, alluded to in songs, and borrowed from in literature. It's impossible to discuss authoritarianism, surveillance, and the manipulation of truth without invoking the book's title. Or <laughs> so sort of like how the NSA is spying in on you. Sort of like how whistleblowers are being arrested under both a Democratic and Republican administrations, right? How... Uh, Everyone's being censored. How TikTok, a major platform, is potentially going to get banned. How people, if they want to post something on Twitter or Facebook, they post a relevant news article from a cited source, uh-oh, they can't do it. It's not like, you know, the media would ever lie and say that there are weapons of mass destruction in some foreign country. Would they? No. Not like we're living in 1984 now and decades earlier on. Or Orwell's name. 1984 is more than just a warning. It's a masterful exploration of complacency, loyalty, and identity. At its core, 1984 is a commentary on how all government, if left unchecked, will exert control to maintain power. Quote, the object of terrorism is terrorism. The object of oppression is oppression. The object of torture is torture. The object of murder is murder. The object of power is power. Now do you begin to understand me? End quote. Big Brother's means to control are clearly laid out for the reader. Exploit the truth and restrict language. Restrict language. Does that sort of like what we see with Twitter or Facebook or Instagram? Sort of like how people have been trying to post uh, the imagery of the destruction in Gaza. How those platform, how those videos and articles are being censored and suppressed. Sort of like how when people were bringing awareness of the Hunter Biden laptop, how they couldn't share that on social media. Sort of like how when people were bringing awareness of the fact that the DNC was committing election fraud in the 2016 and 2020 Democratic primaries. Sort of like how the fact that people were being bullied and harassed because they didn't want to support Hill Dog or Old Man Biden. Right? Right? Sort of like how corporate media was in on it. Right? Like how MSNBC and CNN have been in on it. Yes, it's easy to vilify Fox News and Republicans, but it's all the same. George Carlin would be rolling and laughing and jumping up and down, calling you a bald-headed jagoff if you were alive today. That sound familiar today? Orwell's writing style is as integral to the book as the plot and the characters are. 1984 is written with frank and direct words that mirror, mirror the bleak and deadened life that exists under the party. Orwell masterfully intersperses fleeting moments of emotion and more sensory language to underscore Smith's emotional break from the party. Moreover, Orwell writes extensively about the power of clear and deliberate language, especially when it comes to politics, arguing that politicians hide behind contrived words and canned verbiage. Orwell's works, including 1984, have become a rite of passage for high school students across the country. Big Brother has been dissected for, by generations of young readers since the book's publication all the way back in 1949. And now, with our country at such a perilous crossroads, one would think that 1984 would be even more crucial for students to read. But 1984 has been removed from library shelves in Iowa in cooperation with Senate File 496, which restricts books that contain any depiction of sex. And in Texas, and in Florida, and in Missouri, and in Kansas, and in Oklahoma, and in Pennsylvania, perhaps Big Brother was right all along. And quote, ignorance is strength. <sighs> but hey, let's talk about what's happening. Supreme Court grapples with online First Amendment rights as social media teams with misinformation. Oh, 60 minutes, because we could trust them, right? With big tech firms wrestle to, with how to keep false and harmful information off their social networks, the Supreme Court is wrestling with whether platforms like Facebook and Twitter, now called X, have the right to decide what users can say on their sites. Because the establishment, no matter who it is, or what branch of government it is wants to make sure all of you follow the narrative. 
dispute centers of a pair of laws passed in the red states, Florida and Texas, over the question of the First Amendment rights on the Internet. Supreme Court is considering whether the platforms like are like newspapers, which have free speech rights to make their own editorial decisions, or if they're more like telephone companies that merely transmit everyone's speech. If the laws are upheld, the platforms could be forced to carry hate speech and false medical information, the very content most big tech companies have spent years trying to remove through teams and uh, content moderators. It's not like there could ever be automatic or human error. We here at Hardlands Media have dealt with the censorship not once but nine times. Our friends at Indie News Network have been hit with it. Our friend JB has been hit with it. RBN's been hit with it. Due Dissidents, Jimmy Dore, everyone across independent media. I hear how many times my own viewing audience members have been unsubscribed from my channel or other content creators. But heaven forbid they're using their high mind hate speech and false medical information. What is Are they truly the majority? Or is it because people are giving a middle finger to the institutions? And, of course, you've got so many triggered snowflakes out there that quickly hide and say, Oh, no, we got to do something. Lawsuit, lawsuit. Oh, no, we got to cancel, cancel. Because you got people who are not emotionally mature enough to be on social media. But in the process, conservatives claim that the companies have engaged in a conspiracy to suppress their speech. It's not only just conservatives. It's, it's everyone. As in this case, a tweet from 2022 Congresswoman MTG, you know me, falsely claiming that there were extremely high amounts of COVID vaccine deaths. Well, there's there's a lot coming out about that dear old vaccine. Twitter eventually banned Green's personal account for multiple violations. Facebook and YouTube also removed or labeled posted a deemed misinformation. Confronted with criticisms like conservatives, like Congressman Jim Jordan, that social media companies were censoring their views, and because of the cost... Uh, Coast costing platforms began downsizing their fact checking teams. Oh my goodness. So today, social media is teeming with min- misinformation. Like these posts suggesting tanks are moving across the, the Texas Mexico border. Why? But it's actual footage from Chile. These are AI generated images of, well, see for yourself. With social media moderation teams shrinking, a new target is misinformation academic researchers who began working closely with platforms after evidence of Russian interference online in the 2016 election. So you get all these people out here complaining and triggered. But hold on, folks. See, because no matter who it is, be it Democrat or, or Republican, liberal media or conservative media, There's now a push for censorship and both both parties and corporate media as a whole. That's including Fox News and BSDNC because we got an article here from Fox News. Conservatives continue to go after freedom of speech online on campuses, on college campuses by wanting to prevent pro-Palestinian activism and calling it terrorism. Columbia University hosting a Palestinian resistance event featuring a Palestinian group that was banned from Germany for its ties to terrorism. A Columbia professor slammed the university, saying their leaders, quote, let people with clear links to terrorism recruit students students on campus. They should be fired immediately. And with that, let's bring in the co-author of Stolen Youth, Montgomery County, Maryland School Board candidate Bethany Mandel. Bethany, great to see you. Nothing like offering up a little Palestinian resistance 101. The Washington Free Beacon writes the following, quoting, Speakers and other attendees were explicit in their support for terrorism against Jews, a popular front for the liberation of Palestine activists lauded airplane hijackings as one of the most important tactics that the Palestinian resistance have engaged in. I'm not sure where it ends from there, Bethany, but I think, you know, probably not the best topic to be bringing on campus. No, I mean, it's incredible. Are they just sugarcoating and picking things? Or are they once again spewing out misinformation? Now, yes, there are people out there who say some really stupid, dumb things. But notice, you have a conservative media outlet calling for censorship. No different than what you would see from BSDNC, I mean MSNBC. No different than any Democrat or Republican lawmaker. It's the institution, the establishment, that is putting the jackboot collectively on all of our necks. Don't you get it how the game is being played now? 
the professor who you just showed on air, Shai Davidai, has been fantastic and so outspoken. And in response, he's been the subject of retaliation at Columbia, he alleges. It's, it's really a terrifying time to be a Jewish student on campus. I'm hearing it mm -hmm. from professors like Davidai um, at professors at MIT. And there was a new survey that was just commissioned by the Israel on Campus Coalition and Shoen Cooperman, Cooperman that showed that 73% of Jewish college students feel less safe on campus than they did before 10-7. And the thing mm -hmm. that's shocking to me about that stat is why isn't it more? Why isn't it like 93% instead of 73%? But the, the fear is really palpable and it's because of stuff like this. Yeah, and you really do. You wonder where is the 27%? Are they getting, are they getting security from somewhere? Are they feeling secure? Is somebody making them feel better? Because we don't hear those stories. We just don't hear those at all, yeah. Bethany. Yeah, they're probably honestly hiding their Judaism. That's another thing I'm hearing from a lot of students, especially at Columbia and Barnard, is that they're hiding their Judaism. Both my sister-in-laws are Barnard alumni, and I yeah. would be shocked if they let their daughters go there, and even more shocked if they donated a penny. Rutgers University yeah. is where I went. Uh, they're, they're trying to pass a BDS resolution right now. It's craziness yeah. across campuses around the country. It's madness and insanity all around. So what can we learn from this? First of all, Beware of corporate media and its lies. Beware of these politicians and how they want to control the narrative because they're going to be twisting and turning everything. And I said the censorship is going to intensify a lot, especially during this election cycle. I want to tell you that things are going to get better, but no, that's a lie. And I won't tell you to worship or support any politician because you shouldn't. Keep your heads on a swivel, folks.